What's up, what it do, it's your boy Dead Gamer, aka Player One, and welcome to another episode of The Gamer's Den, the show where I go over video game news, tech news, and a little bit of everything else. So if this is your speed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Before we get into quick hits, I know I didn't drop an episode before Thanksgiving, I believe, or whatever that case, so I just want to say happy belated Thanksgiving to y'all. Hope y'all had a cool Thanksgiving. My Thanksgiving was eventful. You know, just to keep it short and sweet, it was very eventful. Um, you know, back, I know um, if you follow me on Instagram, I had put a little message out saying I was gonna be, you know, active on socials and, you know, putting out content for a while. So that while ended up being about a week. And, you know, everything is cool. I'm good, everything is straight. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know y'all really just care about watching it and stuff like that. Y'all don't y'all don't hit nobody up no way. But um, you know, just regardless, I do appreciate everybody that watch, everybody that subscribed, everybody that, you know, has just been sitting in silence and waiting for you for the God to return to give y'all dope content, dope, you know, just dope stuff in general. So with that being said, let's get back to it with quick hits. Today in Quick Hits, we got three articles we jam-packed to the brim with this one. So, let's go ahead and get into it with the wild card or the random I just had to find with it before recording this. Headline reads, Keanu Reeves doesn't want John Wick or Neo in Mortal Kombat. Now, personally, I, I think that would be a cool fit with either one. Probably more so a Neo than uh, John Wick as a character. But who knows? So let's go ahead and get into it. Keanu Reeves has revealed that he doesn't believe Mortal Kombat to be a good fit for John Wick or Neo. I'm not going to read this other part because it's just a bunch of bibble babble. Let's go to his quote. Quote, if it was up to me, no. Mortal Kombat is awesome in so many ways. But I think, you know, Neo, John Wick, they're doing their own thing. Reeves told Esquire. Mortal Kombat is doing their own thing. Reeves certainly know these characters more than us internet folks who wants to see Neo lean back to Dodge Scorpion's infamous get over here chain attack. But come on, know the John Wick as well? That character is a trained assassin that has killed anyone in his way. Surely Sub-Zero doesn't stand a chance. So um, yeah, you know, and there's a couple more things going on in the article here where, you know, they talk about how uh, Warner Brothers owns pretty much the studio that makes uh, Mortal Kombat, which is Netherrealm, or whatever the case, and they own the Matrix franchise, and I believe John Wick as well, did they say that? I don't know. And they, um, it even says up here that the uh, Mortal Kombat series creator, um, yeah, or um, Netherrealm, whatever, you know, Noob Saibot, aka Ed Boom, he said that they was pretty close to putting Neo in Injustice too. So, um, yeah, my bad about that. I'm having phone things. It's, uh, phone complicated things are popping in now um so you know that's dope um personally i if anything out of these two characters i think neo will be a more perfect fit or a more a more fit into mortal kombat as a whole they even put the terminator in you know mortal kombat so i don't see how they can't put neo in mortal kombat i could understand him personally whatever his personal gripes or stance is with it that's that's him and keanu reeves has the right to feel However he feels and whatever he wants about that. He played these characters in real life, acted it out. So, you know, it's uh, you know, it is what it is on his point. Me from a fan point, from a gamer point, I think it'd be cool. They made Terminator work, so I think it'd be cool if they had him in Mortal Kombat. But let's go ahead and get into the next thing, because this is quick hits. Headline reads: Sony has patented its PS5 face plates. Now, if y'all remember um, a couple episodes ago, well, we start in the 50s now, so a gang of episodes ago, I had uh, talked about the black PS5 or like the black face plates where it was like a um, third party country off brand company, uh, I say country, a third party company, off brand company, whatever the case, and they was making, um, you know, black PS5s, just the face plates, dipping and making them black, whatever the case. It seems like Sony is now officially maybe putting out black editions of the PS5. 
Let's get into it. Sony has filed a patent for its PS5 faceplates. The design patent was originally filed just a week before the PS5's November launch last year, and it was subsequently published in the United States Patent and Trademark Office on November 16th. It has fueled speculation that Sony will create its own PS5 faceplates or skins. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it with that, you know? So, I think, I don't, I mean, we can all pretty much take a, a, a highly favored, educated guess and be like, yeah, they're going to come out with a black PS5, and it might be dope. But given, you know, pandemic and worldwide shortages of chips and this, that, and the third, that might become a rare commodity in itself. And if and, and you're asking me personally, I think this might be quadruple the price if you get a, re, if you get a, uh, a reseller or somebody. Because let me tell you this, if I got a black PS5, right, and I know it's, and if it's still, like, mind you, if we get to the point where Sony actually puts out a black PS5, great, cool. All right, cool. Because it's a black PS5, and let's say the conditions that are now still holds up at the time the black PS5 comes. A black PS5 is going to be rare, let alone a standard white one. So me, just because I'm a little greedy and I know I can get away with it, I might charge you three times the original price just because it's black. <laughs> like just because it's like if I'm a reseller now I'm not saying hey any resellers go out there and just run up the meter run up the run up the price on people no you gotta be reasonable you know what I'm saying it just if the situation is the same by the time allegedly any black PlayStation 5s come out or the situation is worse but yeah let's go ahead and move on to the last thing a quick hits which is probably my favorite thing out of everything Headline reads, Niantic and, and Niantic and a crypto debit card company made an AR game where you earn Bitcoin. Now, that headline in itself is, uh, I, I wish they wouldn't have said a debit card company. They could have just said Niantic and somebody else was, was coming up to make an AR Bitcoin type of game. That would have been cool, but nonetheless. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Fold AR is a new augmented reality game from Pokemon Go developer Niantic and the financial company Fold. The game, which a press release dubs part of the metaverse, is very loosely modeled on Pokemon Go but themed around cryptocurrency. As explained by Fold CEO Will Reeves, it runs with the metaphor of mining Bitcoin. So instead of capturing cute monsters, the central mechanic involves finding cubes of binary coal and tapping them and tapping them like Minecraft blocks until they reveal a prize. Huh. That's actually all right. That ain't half bad. The prizes include Bitcoin and the denomination of Satoshi is a very small unit currently worth around 1 20th of a penny. They also include power-ups for Fold, which already gam gamifies card purchases through an app that lets you spin a wheel and win Bitcoin rewards. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. You know, this is just a testament to more of just the technology and stuff that y'all know I've been looting about because y'all like, you know, y'all know y'all been watching this 50 something episodes now. You know what I'm saying? We in here, you know, I think, you know, this is just where we headed as uh, as far as t as a technological society. This is where we headed to where we have these new centralized and decentralized places and platforms. And, you know, people are companies are taking advantage of the space and they're coming up with new ways to interact in the space which is a really really dope thing you know and i think this is dope i might check it out granted where i'm at i'm not gonna be doing a lot of walking because it's winter time right now so yeah i'm not about to be walking and barking around you know saying hey there's bitcoin cube over here on blah 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 street yeah no ain't nobody doing all that ain't nobody doing all that <laughs> you know what i'm saying but that's gonna do it for quick hits once again, if you like this show and this your speed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Help the guy out. Now, y'all also know that on my Instagram that it's a, it's a post on there and I told y'all to send y'all's emails. And if you don't know, just listen out. I told y'all to send y'all's cool gaming clips, whatever you got going on, whatever dope clip, whatever dope, whatever you did in any video game, send it to the gamers den cc at gmail.com and i'll put it up on the show 
and I'm gonna do it right here after quick hits. So as of right now, I'm gonna just show y'all as an example how this gonna go. So I got a cool clip that I've been holding. I've been holding. I'm gonna put it up here in the episode and I'm gonna also put it up as a short because I realize it might do better as a short, but I don't know. You know, you only got to see. I mean, I'm gonna do it both ways anyway, but it is. But here's a clip of um, me, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. I should have died, but I didn't and I came back. I was dead set on doing this one move the entire time. I just wasn't letting up. I was like, no, I'm gonna get this move off. That was Community Clips, that's what I'm gonna call it. Community Clips, I never really did say a name or a cool little hashtag, whatever the case may be. Because at the end of the day, I do wanna build up a community with everybody that's watching my uh, content, that supports my content and all that. So um, definitely, you know, get it in with me on Twitter, get it in with me on Instagram. You know, like I said, if I didn't say already, email the gamers dncc at gmail.com it should be up on the screen on the screen not screen that's where you go that's where you email it sends you clips make sure to send like your twitter and your twitter handle or your instagram handle your youtube handle something that way people know where to go to see more of your dope clips or something like that because i know it's people out here we all gamers but some people not hardcore gamers some people not pro gamers some of y'all just casual and sometimes we all all of us sometimes we just do cool stuff in the game and nobody sees it and you know i just want to extend my platform to everybody who's been supporting me rocking with me down with me and show y'all some love back and let y'all get some of this like too so let's go ahead and get to the main topic so this main topic you know, um, like I said, I already talked about it before, so I don't mind talking about it again because once again, I rock with y'all and this is what I do, baby. This is what I do. Headline reads, Dragon Age 4 creative director leaves Bioware. Now, this is big news for me because I'm a fan of Dragon Age as a franchise series, even though I came in around like Dragon Age 3 or Dragon Age Origins, whatever the case may be, um, I enjoyed the game. You know, so let's get this out. I enjoyed the game. I played it a lot when it was on PS3. I didn't get the platinum in, but I definitely enjoyed the game. And plus, y'all already know my speed is like one player games, Final Fantasy type games. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I love first person shooters too. You know, Killzone was like probably the first, I think. Well, actually, that'd be a lie because it'd be whatever I played on PS2 and before all that and PS1. But like, I really didn't like FPS shooters until Killzone, until that Killzone series came around. But um, as I digress, you know, I'm a fan of Dragon Age. And as far as the creative director leaving Bioware as a whole, might, says, might say a lot about just what was going on at Bioware, which after this video, I'm gonna have to do some research into because I don't know what's going on at Bioware. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. Dragon Age 4 has lost its senior creative director. According to a report from Kotaku, Matt Goldman left Bioware after working for four years. In an email shared with Kotaku, Bioware General Manager Gary McKay wrote, and I quote, We understand that Matt's departure has an impact on you as well as the game's development. Rest assured, our commitment to a high-quality Dragon Age game has not wavered, and we will not ship a game that is not up to Bioware's standards. End quote. A Bioware spokesperson also commented on Goldman's departure, saying, and quote, he leaves the next Dragon Age game in excellent hands, with the team here at the studio who will carry forward our vision for the game. Now, that's cool and that's great, and that's just my main concern about this Dragon Age game, Dragon Age 4. You know, games like Dragon Age, and, I, and I'm speaking more in terms of games that have franchises, right? That have more than just, that have prequels, sequels, and, and just installments on installments. So like Call of Duty, uh, maybe Killzone at one time, like I was saying. Borderlands, definitely. Dragon Age itself. 
Final Fantasy itself. Games like this, Dragon Quest even. Games like this where they have a series of games where fans and the fan base can go, oh, I like this one better than this one. Or this one had a feature, this one didn't. And if this one was in that one, then this was here and just start drawing the lines and connecting dots places, you know? So Dragon Age is one of those series of games where it's a it's a MMO, it's a RPG, you know what I'm saying? You get to play, you know, you get to be an arch or whatever. You could be an archer, have a sword, you know, custom class. You could be an elf, whatever you want, right? And we love games like that. Elder Scrolls, same thing, Skyrim. We love games like that, you know? And it's just like they said, you know, they gonna carry out the vision for the game. That's just my thing. With him leaving, I don't want the the core essence of what a Dragon Age game is to be lost and or not be able to be felt once Dragon Age 4 comes out. Because us as gamers and consumers and you know the diehard fans of any franchise, any franchise game, they're going to see that, feel that, and know that once the game comes out. Because we'll pick up a controller and play the game and be like, this is what y'all decide to put in the game? Or this is what you thought it was? Why are you trying to appeal to this? My example would be Borderlands 3. As if you read some of uh, early articles, watch some earlier videos in the earlier life cycle of Borderlands 3, people were saying oh, they're trying to appeal to, you know, the PC culture in a sense, or they're trying to appeal to more of the social norms nowadays and the social tropes going on with today which they may or may not be, because some people felt like that with Hammerlock and uh, old boy getting married, you know, they ended up being homosexual. Personally, I did, like, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm a fan of Borderlands. I don't know about Die Hard. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Borderlands, all right? I've been playing since BL1, okay? Borderlands 1, all the way up to now. I played every last one, I beat every last one. If I can get a psycho mask, I would. And matter of fact, that's gonna be one of my next 10 purchases without order something online. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> but um, I digress. I didn't know Hammerlock was homosexual. And then when you do the research, they're like, oh yeah, they dropped their hints in Borderlands 2 and this, that, and here. And I was just like, either I didn't, didn't care enough or whatever the case may be, I just didn't catch it. I wasn't paying attention. Mind you, we talk about a Borderlands game. So a lot of the time, you got to pay attention to dialogue in the middle of a firefight. You got a psycho coming at you with a buzz axe. You got people shooting all kinds of craziness at you. It's Borderlands. Is you really listening to the dialogue sometimes? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you kind of, it kind of is hit and miss. It's in your ear out the other. So, you know, you know, just that type of dynamic of happening of society, you know, affecting the game like this so much. You know, Skyrim is another example as well as to where there's so much of freedom and you can just do crazy stuff in the game, um, you know, with sex and stuff like that. Not to say it's condoned or expected in these types of games, just saying, you know, imagination and story and just the essence of all these games are something that is at its core, along with graphics and mechanics and stuff like that. Because the story elements, the story element of the games, they all come together to make the experience. So whether they strike that chord of, man, this feels like a Dragon Age game, man, this feels like a, a ooh, game, you know, it's just my only concern with uh, Matt Goldman leaving. And I'm blinded by this light here. So it's taking me a minute to like read the words because it's like, you know, when you stare directly into the sun that you kind of can't see, yeah, that, that thing is going on. I got, I'm getting used to this light, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm getting used to this light, you know, but um, yeah. And that's going to be it for this episode of The Gamers Den. If you made it this far, please leave a like and subscribe to Player One, the guy. It'll help me out. And we're going to keep going, man. We'll be here rocking, you know what I'm talking about? I'm going to catch y'all next time, man. Gone.